Hi, this is Sandy. Um, I am Sharon's sister. I'm not sure how much she filled you in, but yes, I am Sharon's sister, and I am really excited to be able to um, talk to you guys today about essential oils and all the ways that they can benefit our bodies. And um, I just, I love what they're doing for me and for my family, and I'm really excited to share that with you. Um, now, this is going to be a basic introduction to oils class. If you're not using oils at all yet, this will give you a nice overview. If you are using oils already, hopefully you'll learn something new through the class also, though. Now, um, there's no way that I can cover everything about essential oils in a one-hour class. So, um, if you'd like to, I have a Facebook group where we do some continuing education and where we talk about oils. You're more than welcome to join that, and um, you can... I can put a link to that somewhere when we're done if you'd like that. Um, also, you can research anything I tell you. Um, you can go to a great search engine called Scholar, S-C-H-O-L-A-R, scholar.google.com, and that search engine weeds through all of the bloggy type posts and goes right to the um, scientific research posts, and you can do a lot of research there if you'd like. So if you don't want to believe anything I say, you want to look it all up, please feel free to do that. Now, I am going to be using notes. I have my notes right here. Um, and that's for a couple reasons. First of all, um, I value your time. And I've been allotted one hour, and I want to really try to not rabbit trail too much and stick to that one hour. And also because there's so much information I want to give you. And I, I don't have it memorized, so I just have my notes here. Um, this playback will be available through Facebook. So um, you'll be able to access it pretty much anytime you need to. Um, at the end of the hour, we will I will stick around after we finish the class for questions and answers. So if you want to jot down questions as we go, please feel free to do that. I probably won't stop and answer them as we go because I want to make sure I get through all the materials so that those who want to be finished after the end of the hour can do that. Okay, now for an obligatory disclaimer. Um, I'm not a doctor. I'm not professionally medically trained. This class is not at all about trying to heal or treat or diagnose any illness, injury, or disease. Um, there's an official disclaimer that I've put into the event, and so you can check that out if you need to. Um, with that said, though, a lot of what I've learned, I have learned from a doctor named Dr. Jim Bob Haggerton down in Texas. I believe he's in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. He does a lot of trainings online, and I've really benefited a lot from those. So one other thing, housekeeping wise, is that I'm going to be talking um, about general, I'm going to be using some very vague terms, oh, excuse me, I get a little nose itch, little vague terms, very generality kind of a thing, talking about wellness. Um, I have to keep the FDA happy, so I can't sit, use specific things. I can't say oil ABC will do XYZ for you exactly, okay? So... Um, there are other resources out there. There's an app that I personally use, and there are some reference books that you can take a look at that can tell you exactly what you can use an oil for or exactly which oil to use for something that you need to use an oil for. Okay, so what are we going to do today? Um, we are going to, in this class, I'm going to teach, and then I'm going to give you some advice. I'm going to teach you about seven things about oils in general, okay? What they are, what they're not. Um, one of the scientific aspects, I'm not going to get real technical on you guys, but one scientific aspect, a brief history of oils, um, some safety things to know about oils, um, talking about purity of oils and how to apply them. Then I'm going to give you some, talk about some specific oils that are really good to get started with. And then I'm going to give you some advice so that you can avoid the mistake I made when I got started with essential oils. Um, one other housekeeping thing to take care of, though. Let me just address the elephant in the room, okay? Um, this Fighting Cancer did not bring you, excuse me, Fighting Cancer Inc. did not bring you to the retreat to try to sell to you or for Sharon to benefit financially or for me to even benefit financially from you, okay? So we are not here to sell you oils, um, but we do want you to know about them. They're an awesome resource for you to have. So when I, I am going to recommend a particular company to you, and I do work with that company. Sharon also um, is someone who can refer people to that company. But I'm going to give you a couple options. If you want to bless me, bless Sharon by using our referral number. Um, if you use Sharon, she's part of my organization, so it would bless me also. Um, you can do that. If you want to do that, that's fine. 
if you want to um, I have a friend who also has a referral number with Young Living she's a lady that goes to my church her husband actually is one of the pastors at our church I would not benefit in any way financially if you were to use her number Sharon would not benefit in any way financially if you used her number so you have that option also or you have a third option of just going to their website and when you get to the part where they ask for a referral number you just say I don't have one and they will assign you a random person okay um, I'm willing to teach you this class and have you go sign um, up using somebody else's referral number as a customer okay so let's just get that out in the open so we're not worried about that all right so let's get started first of all what are essential oils they are liquids okay they come in these little tiny bottles um, for instance this one here is lavender but they're liquids and they come from plants they're completely plant products um, they're distilled so what they do they take these big huge vats I mean huge vats put the water in the bottom then they put plant, plant material in the middle now that could be roots bark um, stems leaves fruit flower petals just any part of the plant at all it can be any part of the plant and different oils they get from different parts of the plant and then they steam get that water to be steamed the steam goes up it collects the oils from the plants as it goes through and then they separate the water out and they're left with the essential oils um, the essential oils are I like to think of them as God's gift to us through nature they are the life flow of the plant all of that goodness that runs through the plants um, through the leaves through the stems through the bark it circulates through the plants to give it what it needs to be healthy those that's what we're talking about those essential oils now they are very complex each one has between 200 and 500 what we call constituents well what's a constituent okay what makes an apple different than an orange an apple has apple constituents and an orange has orange constituents so it's just what it what it's made up of so they have between two and five hundred of those um, these oils are fat soluble that means that the when you put them on your skin the little in fact let me show you this a little bit um let's see what do we want to put on today let's put on some copieva when you take an oil and you drop it on your skin let's see if you can see this here there you go see that little drop can you see it tripping down there okay you can see the reflection a little bit i'm going to rub that in and the fatty tissue in my skin is just going to absorb that up and see there it's gone it's been absorbed um, so they're fat soluble they're very friendly with our skin uh, let's see what does my next note say oh yes they are very potent and yet they are body friendly um, they are made up of many of the same natural compounds that our bodies are made of all essential oils have hydrogen and carbon in them hydrocarbons most of them also have oxygen some of them have sulfur in them and a few of them have nitrogen in them and those are yeah those are the same chemical compounds that our bodies are made of so they work very well our bodies know exactly what to do with the essential oils when it gets them they um, naturally support every aspect of your body from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet um, they give brain support they give respiratory system circulatory system which is your blood the blood flow your immune system they support your hormones they support emotional balance um, what else do I have here um, your breathing system you know your respiratory system your muscles your bones your joints all those things can be supported by essential oils um, the brain health has been especially important to me as I've gotten into middle age and as I age um, I love um, having a little bit more of a clear mind than I had before I was trying some of the oils I just feel like my brain is really supported and part of the reason for that is because the oils are made up of very tiny molecules okay that one drop of oil that I put on my skin a minute ago had over 40 million trillion molecules in it now that's a big number that's 40 with 18 zeros after it so six sets of three zeros three zeros three zeros three zeros three zeros three zeros and then a 40 that's how tiny these molecules are and they are so small that they can pass through the blood-brain barrier which is um, like a protective thing that God's put around our brains to keep so many harmful things out in fact a lot of pharmaceutical companies very hard to find a 
um, a prescription type thing that can pass through the blood brain barrier, but they can't. Um, essential oils can pass through so they can um, deliver their, their goodness to our brains itself, themselves. Um, another thing the essential oils do is to offer us alternatives to the toxins in so many of our products. There are over 1,300 toxic ingredients that the European Union has banned from their products that the United States, out of those 1,300, the United States has only banned, I think it's 12 or 13 of those 1,300. The rest of those toxic chemicals are in our products in the United States all the time. And you can get um, pure natural products that are infused with essential oils and you get the, the benefit of the oils as well as the soap or whatever it is. I have a couple here. I do use, all the time I use a toothpaste. It comes, um, it has essential oil in it. It has a natural toothpaste. You can get dish soap um, that's got essential oils in it. This is a general household cleaner. Um, it's concentrated, so you take like one cap of it and put it with a, about a pint of water, and you can use that to clean just about anything. I've actually used some of that and made my little um, foamy pump things for the bathroom sinks and stuff. So another thing that you can do with essential oils is use them all over the house and all kinds of products. You can make a lot of your own DIY products as well um, and get rid of the chemicals, get the natural products into your home. Okay, so, um, oh yeah, um, with that aspect, you can pretty much replace everything that's above your sink or below your sink with essential oil products. Um, I love, I have my diffuser running here. Let me see, I'm not sure you can see it. Let me see if I can, there it is. There's my diffuser, see it? Um, I have it running here. Um, it's great to use as an air freshener. I was listening to um, a class today on chemicals and whatnot, and I found out that, um, oh, what's the, uh, what's the chemical that I want? Um, Oh, I can't think of what it is right now. I should have written it down. Um, it's the thing. Oh, formaldehyde. Yeah, formaldehyde is in most of your commercial air fresheners. And I was like, whoa, formaldehyde? Um, yeah, so most they said most, most of your commercial air fresheners that you see in the store have formaldehyde in them. And that's okay because as far as, you know, the government's concerned because they're not taken internally. So they're allowed to do that. Um, I like to use my diffuser as an air freshener. Um, get the double benefit there of the goodness of the oils going in to my breathing them in as well as the clean smells that they have. Okay, what they are not. Essential oils, are they do not have any vitamins in them. There are no minerals in them. There are no nutrients in them. You cannot replace your food with essential oils, okay? You still have to eat. Um, they, because they don't have the actual solid plant material in them, they don't have any of the protein of the plants in them. The protein particles, when they distill and that steam goes up, the protein, the part of the plants that have the proteins in them are too heavy and the proteins do not get up and get distilled. So um, for that reason, they tell me that, you chemi that chemically speaking, it's impossible to be allergic to an essential oil because your body reacts to the proteins of the item that you're reacting to for an allergy. Um, so I thought that was pretty interesting. So if you're using a 100% therapeutic grade pure essential oil, they tell me that you cannot be allergic to it. Now, um, if it's been diluted or altered or anything like that, then yeah, you might have a reaction to whatever else they've added to it. So that's something to watch for. Um, they are not vegetable oils. Um, vegetable oils are very fatty oils. Um, essential oils, don't they're not greasy on your skin. Remember where I put that drop in? It's not greasy at all. They don't clog your pores. They don't go rancid. Um, and they also contain no hormones. They can support your hormonal system, but they do not contain hormones. Okay, on to point number three, one scientific aspect, and this is something I learned recently, but this is really neat. Um, this just made me feel so much better about using essential oils, and I already felt good about them, but now I just, I, I love these things. Um, there are three classes of biochemical components in essential oils, and the three letters that they start with have to be a P and an S and an M, 
but if we flip those two around and call it PMS, you're going to remember it better, okay? So the P is for phenylpropanoids, the M is for monoterpenes, and the S is for sesquiterpenes. So, wow, those are big terms. But let me just tell you real quick in plain old English, because I am not a scientific person. Let me tell you real quick what that means. The P for the phenylpropanoids, and I had to spell that phonetically so I could say it right. The phenylpropanoids, they clean your cell receptors. Okay, so what does that mean? For, let's take, for example, if you had a gate and it had a rusty lock on it. You have the key to the lock. You have what is needed to get through there, but the rocket lock is rusty and the key doesn't open the lock. You've got to get some oil in there or clean that lock out or something like that. And that's what the polypropylene the phenyl, phenyl propanoids, excuse me, do to our cells. They clean that rust off of our cells so that our cells can receive the goodness that goes past them as it goes by. Um, for instance, your cells want antioxidants, but if the receptors are not cleaned, um, if they're clogged with toxins or other things, then as those antioxidants go past that cell, it's not able to reach out and grab them. And um, there's even a theory that, and they're doing research on um, insulin dependent, or insulin resistant, excuse me, insulin resistant people that possibly that resistance may come from the cell receptors needing to be cleaned. Um, so that's really interesting. So, um, Oh, and let me mention too that not all essential oils have all three of these and they don't all have them in the same levels. If you look at one of those apps or reference books, you, it'll tell you which essential oils are high in which of these three. But all essential oils have at least one of these in them. So the P is for the poly, phenyl, phenylpropanoids and they clean the cell receptors. The S is for sesquiterpenes. Um, they deliver oxygen and they do, they do what we like to call erase and deprogram wrong coding in our cells, okay? A healthy cell is exactly what it's supposed to be. An unhealthy cell has got problems inside of it, um, just as, like for example, if you had a computer virus and you wanted to fix that, you have to get that bad coding, the bad programming out before you can replace it with good. And that's what the sesquiterpenes do. Um, the cells that aren't well, part of our DNA even, it can um, erase and deprogram the bad stuff, okay? And then the M is for the monoterpenes. What they do is they rewrite the good stuff into the cell code. Um, just like that computer virus that we had, we cleaned it off. Well, then we have to reset the computer back to the manufacturer's specifications. Okay, um, so that's what all essential oils have at least one of those three components in it. They may have more than one, but they have at least one and they have them in different levels. Um, there's also a whole other scientific aspect of the frequencies of our cells. Our the cells of our bodies are not st stagnant, they are moving and they move at various speeds or frequencies and the essential oils also have various speeds or frequencies that those cells move at and they can harmonize and blend and all that kind of stuff. So if you're a scientific person, you can do some research into the frequencies of essential oils in our bodies. All right, on to point number four, a brief history. And this is real brief, okay? Um, some of the first mentions of essential oils go back to the Bible and they're mentioned in the Bible. Um, they don't use the word essential oils, but the oils are talked about, the plant materials that they come from are talked about um, either directly or indirectly over 1,100 times. So you go back to when Joseph was sold to the slave traders, they were carrying myrrh. Um, you have all of the Old Testament temple oils. You have the wise men. They brought frankincense and myrrh to baby Jesus. Those two things were important enough in the culture of their day that they took them on that long trek. They brought him gold and then they brought him the frankincense and the myrrh. Um, in the New Testament, we hear a lot about um, anointing the sick with oil and praying over them. Um, and so, you, you know, the oils are all through the Bible. Um, they've been used me medically and for religious purposes by the Babylonians. 
the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, the Chinese, all these different cultures have used essential oils. Um, they were kind of lost popularity, I guess you could say, until about World War II. And there was a field, sold, a field net doctor, a field doctor, I'll get it out yet, who um, used essential oils on a lot of the soldiers in World War II with great success. And after that, they started to revive again in Europe. And it's really just been the last 20 years or so that they've started to become popular in the States, mostly in the last five to 10 years. Um, they've gained a lot of popularity and it's because they're pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I've had a, a friend try um, an essential oil for the first time right before they left my house on Saturday. And they got to their car and started to drive down the street and they called me and they're like, what was that stuff you gave me? It is awesome. Where can I get this stuff? So, and they had never tried an essential oil before, but they tried it and were totally blown away by the results that they got with it. Okay, on to point number five, some safety aspects. There are six things you need to think about with essential oils. And I have a quick class on this, but I'm going to make this even quicker than the quick class, okay? Um, if you are brand new, you want to start gradually, okay? Don't go slapping 10 different oils on you at one time and don't go putting 10 drops of lemon in your water right away, okay? Um, the oils try to help your body get back to its natural balance and it does that by helping to flush out the things that aren't supposed to be in there. Any artificial things in your food or chemicals in your products that you put on or whatever, your body's going to help, or the oils are going to help to flush them out of your body. So you want that to happen very gradually. Um, you don't want to get that discomfort that you can have from a detox that's a real harsh detox. So start really gradually, okay? Um, number two, don't ever get them in your eyes. Don't put them in your ears. If you do get them in your eyes, which one time I have applied peppermint, forgot that I had that on my fingers and got it in my eye, then I won't do that again. Um, that stings. <laughs> it really does. It stings. Um, now, I was able to just close my eye, and my eye is created in such a way that it can flush itself out, and that's all I had to do. But if it's a little bit too uncomfortable for you to just let your eye take care of it, you can flush it out with something like a rice milk, or they tell me that you can flush it out with a vegetable oil. Um, so try to keep it out of your eyes, keep it out of your ears. Number three, only take oils internally that you know are safe to take internally. And there's two aspects to that. You want pure essential oil without any chemicals in it, and you want the ones that are made to go inside of a human body, okay? Just like you could have an all-natural lotion for your skin, but you're not supposed to eat that lotion. There are some oils that are not intended to go inside of a human body. They're meant to be used on the outside only. I love what this company has done. They have taken over 40 of their oils that are good for internal consumption and they've put a white label on them. So it's really easy to see which ones are okay to go inside and which ones are better left on the outside. Number four, dilute, 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 dilute your oils. I'll talk more about how to do that in a minute, but um, I dilute almost everything that I put on my skin. Some oils, the directions say to dilute, um, and when you are using oils with very young or very old, you want to probably dilute a little bit extra for that. The diluting slows down the absorption. It's a little more gentle on um, someone that has a system that needs a little bit more support. Um, are they safe for kids? Yeah, they're safe for kids. We even This company even has a line of baby products that are that are. Um, have essential oils in them. So yes, essential oils are safe for kids, but just like for yourself, you would want to start gradually. You want to dilute, let those little bodies um, absorb it a little bit more slowly. All right. Um, two more things. Number five, citrus oils and sunshine. Okay. Um, citrus oils would be like your lemon, your tangerine, your lime, your orange, all those things that sound citrusy. And some of the blends of oils have citrus oils in them. So you want to know what your blends have in them. You don't want to put them on your skin and then go under a sun lamp or go outside and sunbathe or work in the sun um, because they're, they're much more susceptible to you getting burned. And if you go under a sun lamp, you can get really burned. Um, so if you put an, uh, 
citrus oil on your skin, you want to wait maybe as much as 12 hours before you go out in the sun. Some people even have to wait up to 24 hours before they go out in the sun. So citrus oils on your skin and sunshine is not a good combination. And the last thing, if you have a medical condition that you're using a routine prescription for, or if you're pregnant or nursing or something like that where you have a specific medical condition, um, you want to keep your doctor in the loop um, or your midwife or whoever in the loop with that. Um, in the case of a prescription, you may find that your dosage will change once you've started using essential oils. Um, so you want to make sure that you are talking to your doctor, that you're getting your levels tested, and that you're not taking more of a prescription than you need to be taking. So just those six things. If you're new, start slowly. Keep it out of your eyes and ears. Only put inside what's supposed to go inside. Dilute. Citrus and sunshine, no good. And if you have a medical condition, keep your doctor in the loop, okay? All right, on to point number six. Let's talk purity for a minute. Um, we're going to go to all this effort to get these essential oils into our bodies to help flush out the toxins, help make our cells more well, all this kind of stuff. We don't want to be putting things, toxins, into our system or, or putting synthetic things into our system mixed in with our essential oils. Um, not all oils are processed the same. Not all oils are the same in the bottles. Um, what goes on the plant or what goes in the soil um, goes inside the essential oil. And so it's really important that the entire process of growing the plants and processing the plants is done with the utmost integrity and utmost quality control. Um, some oils are synthetic. They are made from petroleum products. Some oils are just for fragrances. They don't have that high quality. They're just for the smell. If they get the smell, they're not worried about any of those constituent levels or anything. Um, but if you're going to put it on your body or in your body, you want to get a 100% therapeutic grade pure essential oils. Now, in our labeling system in this country, unfortunately, if a bottle says it's 100% pure therapeutic grade, the government only requires that that bottle contain 100% pure therapeutic grade oil. It doesn't have to be only the oil, it just has to contain 5% of that, what it says on the label. Um, and they can have the rest with a different kind of oil to stretch it or something like that. So you really need to know about the company that you're getting it from. Sometimes you can just smell that it's not right, but sometimes you can't take, take, tell the difference by smelling. But um, for that reason, I only recommend and I only use the oils put out by Young Living. Um, I don't know of any other company that has the quality control that they have, that has the, the promise of purity that they have. They call it their seed to seal pledge. Um, that means they start with high quality seeds that are from healthy plants. So if you're looking into a company, ask if they have seeds that only come from the healthiest plants and only certain varieties of the plants, like lavender. Not all lavender plants are created the same. There's all kinds of varieties. Some smell better, some have a better um, oil grade or that comes from them. So ask, does the company have only high pure quality seeds? Do they plant them at only the right time, at the right depth? Do they cultivate them um, with the right growing conditions? Are they grown in parts of the world where they're going to get the amount of sunshine and rain and cold and heat that they need? Um, does the company own its own farms or put in its own employees on its partner farms? Um, I love that Young Living um, has their own. But then also some of the farms are already owned by other companies that don't want to just sell their farms. So they partner with them. They put a quality control employee right there on the farm to make sure everything's done to the high standards. Um, plants are actually hand weeded. There's no, um, there's no chemical pesticides used. There's no chemical fertilizers used. There's no chemical weed killers used on the plants. Everything that's done is done with 100% naturally. Um, they're harvested at their peak time. Ask, you know, does the company harvest at a peak time? Young Living does. Some, some of the oils, they even have to send scientists out into the field 
um, every hour to get the plants at exactly the right time before they harvest. Um, ask if the company distills them at the right temperature. There's one oil, I um, forget what it is off the top of my head, if you use it, do it at the right hunt temperature, it has 300 constituents. If you do it just 10 degrees high, that number runs down to 11. So the, the, the distilling process is very complicated. It has to be the right temperature. It has to be only with stainless steel or glass because as your oils run through plastics, they pull those chemicals out like they pull the chemicals out of your body and the chemicals leach into the oils. So you want a company that distills using only stainless steel and, gla and, and glass. You want a company that tests the products. Every batch of oil needs to get tested to see if all those levels of the constituents are where they're supposed to be. Um, if anybody's taken a shortcut in those first couple steps, it will show up in the testing. Um, if there's any chemicals, fertilizers, pesticides and stuff used, that's going to show up in the testing. Um, see if the company has does its own tests and also has a third party test their their product. Um, with Young Living, only 30% of the oils that they distill actually get into bottles for the consumer. The other 70%, um, even though it has no chemicals in it, if, if the growing conditions aren't just right, it doesn't meet the quality control and they take that oil, they put it back in and recycle it as fertilizers and stuff. So they're very rigorous with their testing to make sure that you're getting the highest quality as well as the highest purity. And that's important to me. Um, they, then um, the, the bottles are, even the bottles are dark bottles to keep the sunlight from um, affecting the quality of the oils. So it's really important to me if I'm going to take this effort to try to get these wonderful natural substances into my body that that's the only thing that's in the bottle and that I'm getting 100% of it. That's all I'm getting and I'm getting the best one that I can get and that's important to me. With Young Living, I know that whatever the name on the, the label is, for instance, this one is lavender, I know that this is only lavender and it's the best lavender I can get, essential oil. On to the next page. Let's talk about how to apply them. Um, the most important thing is that, generally speaking, you want to get the oil into your bloodstream. And you could get really technical on this, um, but you can be imperfect and it's still okay. Just get them into your system. Your body knows what to do with them. Your body will benefit from an oil in the matter of X, even if you're taking the oil because you want it to benefit in the matter of Y. Okay? Um, the oils are going to do what they're going to do. You just need to get them into your body. Okay? Um, imperfect is okay. Don't overthink it. Um, with a lot of these oils, there are recommended ways to get to use them. But if you use them in a way that's not the recommended way, you're still going to get benefits from them. So don't overthink it too much. But basically, um, let me, before I say that, let me just say this too. All of our bodies are different, okay? Um, our bodies are not like math. It's not 2 plus 2 equals 4. What gives you a headache may not bother me at all. And by the same token, what gets rid of my headache might not help you at all. So our bodies are all different. Um, Many of these oils will support more than one system of the body, so or there might be three oils that support the same system. So you could try the first one, see what you think. Try the second one. You might decide you like the first one better than the second or the second better than the first. So don't be afraid to try another oil to see if you get even better results with that oil. Okay, um, And our body systems are linked. Just take our teeth, for example. Um, they are bones. So they're part of our skeletal system, but they're also part of our digestive system because they help to break their food down. So our bodies are all intricately woven together and connected. So um, don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to try some different things with the oils. But generally speaking, there are three ways to, to use them, to what we call apply them. One is topically. That's on your skin. Your skin is your largest system in your body, your largest organ. They tell you the average person has 20 square feet of skin. Um, so you can take them topically on your skin. You can take them aromatically, which is breathing them through your nose. Or you can take some, only some, internally. So let's run through those three things. First, let's do topically. That's the skin. You saw me just drop a drop off and rub it in. That's going to get it into my skin for sure. 
Um, and you can do that, for instance, if I feel like I need an oil on my shoulder, I can apply that oil directly to my shoulder, right where I feel like I want to have it. Or I can put it on one of the default locations. Default locations are the bottom of your feet or put it on your neck. Just kind of rub it around the back of your neck. You can even bring it up here on where your lymph nodes are if you want to, depending on the oil. So you can put it right where you want it or you can put it on a default location. Um, just read the labels. Um, the labels will tell you whether you can apply it straight to the skin or whether you should dilute the oil. And sometimes you dilute it one drop of oil to what we call a, a drop of carrier oil. Sometimes it's one drop to four. So what is a carrier oil? Um, it's one of those fatty oils. It's one of the vegetable oils that we said essential oils are not those. That's what you use as a carrier oil to dilute the oils down. Um, you can use grapeseed, you can use olive oil, you can use coconut oil. Um, I use an oil called V6. V6, it's a, it's a Young Living blend. It's just six different um, vegetable oils, nut oils put together. And I like that one because I have yet to have that leave a stain on my clothing. So I really like that. Um, it does have a little, um, I think it's almond oil oil in it so it does have a nut oil in it so you need to be aware of that if you have any kind of a nut allergy because your carrier oils do have proteins in them you can be allergic to a carrier oil even if you can't be allergic to that essential oil so you just need to know that um, why would you dilute a couple of reasons less is more remember that big huge number that 40 million trillion I think it was or was it trillion million the um, that's enough for every cell in your body to receive 400,000 molecules of that essential oil. So you don't need to be putting on a lot of drops. Say for instance, let's go back to that shoulder. Say I feel like I want to have oil all over my shoulder. If I put 15 drops on there, I'm really just kind of overloading things. And I'm wasting probably 13 or 14 of those drops and um, I like to I'm kind of frugal I like to save and spread stretch them out as much as I can but less is more um, when you have a large area you want to cover if you use a carrier oil you can spread it around without wasting a lot of oil on it another reason we dilute is because um, and these are the ones that the bottle will tell you to dilute because they have what we call a warming sensation. Some of them feel rather tingly, rather warm, sometimes even hot on your skin. They're getting absorbed a little bit too quickly. And so when we use the carrier oil, that spreads it out and that makes it absorb more slowly because of the type of molecules in the carrier oil. So um, we do that to get rid of that warming sensation, especially again on kids and on older people. Um, if you happen to apply an oil and get a rash on your skin, that's just a reaction to that pulling those um, synthetic things and, and chemicals and toxins and stuff out of your skin. You can dilute after you've applied an oil if you need to, and that should help that rash to kind of even out for you. Um, you can also dilute with things like shea butter and cocoa, cocoa butter. Um, it doesn't have to be an oil. It can also be a butter. Remember, these the essential oils help to restore the balance in your system. So they're going to try to expel the toxins. And so sometimes you're going to you might see a rash. I've never gotten a rash. I guess I just have a body that doesn't react. Um, or you might feel some discomfort in, internally. So again, start slowly with that. Now the second way to apply them is aromatically, and that's through something like a diffuser. It could also be as simple as opening the bottle, and there it is. I've breathed it in. I would do that maybe two or three times. You can also um, smell your hands. Anytime I apply oils, I rub them into my skin. I just breathe it into my from my hands a few times because you're still going to have that smell on your hands. And so that's a really easy way to do it. You can also put um, essential oils on an air filter in your furnace system or your air conditioning system if you want to just kind of spread it around. Um, what else about aromatically? Oh, the diffuser. Yeah, the diffuser. When you run a diffuser, where's my, let's see, can't see it there. Oh, here's my diffuser, yeah. Um, Everybody in the room benefits when you run a diffuser. I like to run ours at night in our bedroom. Um, I like to put some stuff in there for immune system because my husband and I both work at a school and lots of yuck happens. So um, you can 
run the diffuser, it not only acts as an air freshener, but it also spreads the goodness throughout the whole room and everybody in the room can benefit. So um, a lot of people like to have them out in their family room, that kind of thing. The third way you can take oils is internally. Now, I can only say, I can only speak to the Young Living oils because I don't know of any other companies that I would feel comfortable recommending that you take theirs internally. Some oils will even say, do not take internally. I mean, it'll be like orange, but it'll say on it, do not take it internally. And that tells you right there that you're not getting just the essential oil. Um, but again, Young Living's got this whole line of FDA approved white labels. These are okay for internal consumption. Um, so you just look for the white vitality oil label. Now, what's the difference, for instance, between this lemon in the yellow label and the lemon that comes in the white vitality label? The difference is the label, okay? It's the exact same oil inside. However, the FDA does not understand or doesn't have any categories, I guess I should say, for something that you can put on your skin and eat. Um, it just doesn't have anything that, that fits that that mold. And so um, Young Living has has worked with the FDA and come up with the system that they're okay with. And so the colored labels will say, we'll talk about any kind of aromatic or topical application. And the white labels, we'll talk about internal um, application, taking them inside. Again, it's the exact same oil. You need to just know that the labels are different to keep the FDA happy. Got to keep the FDA happy. Okay, um, then there's one uh, another way to use the oils, um, and it kind of combines those three aspects, and that's in those products that I mentioned real quickly. You can get oils in supplements. I have a calcium that I take that has several oils in it. Um, you can have oils in your laundry soap, which, again, you're going to smell that. It's going to be on the, the clothes that touch your skin. Toothpaste, general cleaners, deodorant, bath products, all that kind of stuff. Remember those 1,300 ingredients that the European ban, European Union ban? The United States only banned about a dozen of those. Okay, now let's run through some specific oils. This is, um, I'm going to run through 11 that I have here. Um, and this is kind of like a basic arsenal to have. There are over 300 oils out there, but you really only need 10 to 20 to have a really good good start and a good basic arsenal. Um, now again, even if I had a scientific study in front of me, I could not make a claim to you that oil XYZ will do ABC for, for a specific thing. So again, I'm going to be a little bit general, a little bit vague, but I think, I think you'll understand what I'm saying. Okay, and again, the white labels are the ones that can be taken internally also, okay? All right, let's start with the singles. These are ones where there's the name of one plant on the outside, and that's what you're getting on the inside. So this is lavender. Lavender is oh, has so many uses. You can take the lavender internally. Um, so we call that the lavender vitality. The lavender essential oil is really good for relaxation. It's one that a lot of people like to diffuse when they're sleeping at night. It's good for skin and sun. I have a little spray bottle like this one that I keep with lavender in it so that when I've been out in the sun a little bit too long um, and I can tell that my skin is going to protest later, I can spray that lavender on a couple times that evening and it's wonderful what it does for that skin. Um, it's also good for female issues and for your immune system. Copaiba is um, this one when you get um, when you get like one of the starting kits, it comes in the the vitality label. Um, Young Living is the only company I know of that sells the Copaiba, and this one just kind of intensifies all the other oils that you use, and it's good for so many things. Here's the list on this one, okay? It's good for your immune system, for your emotions, for your skin, for your circulation, for your respiratory, and for your nervous system. And again, the one, the Vitality label, you could combine that one with some honey in a glass of warm water, and it would be almost like having a tea. So that's really nice. Peppermint. Peppermint comes in the Vitality label also. This one in your water really packs a punch. So if you're putting this in water, only put a drop or two, okay? Um, if you are putting oils in water, just put maybe a drop or two of honey in so that the oils have something to hold on to because you know the oils and water don't mix. And if you just drop the water 
the oils in the water, they kind of lay on the top. You have to keep stirring it every time you drink it and stuff. But if you put just a drop or two of honey, that gives the oil something to latch on to. So anyway, back to peppermint. Um, peppermint's good for your nervous system, which includes your brain. It's good for muscles and bones. It is a really fresh, uplifting scent. Um, and it's really good for concentration. Now the peppermint vitality also makes really good peppermint brownies. I tried this the other day. I took, I mean, it just took a store box or, or box mix of brownies, and right before I baked it, I threw, I mixed in five drops of peppermint oil, and then I took it to work and I put a sign on it that said it was an experiment with peppermint brownies. Was it too much, too little? And the people who responded to me said it was like the perfect amount of peppermint, just a hint of the taste, not too strong. So anyway, peppermint's a really good one um, when you're baking and stuff like that too. All right, lemon. This one comes in the Vitality, although mine is just a plain yellow label. Lemon's really good for your digestion. It's really good for your skin, for your respiratory system. Um, it's also good for immune system. And the peppermint, or excuse me, the lemon Vitality is really good flavoring. I made some potatoes tonight, and um, it calls for lemon juice. So instead of that, I used that amount of water, and then I put in... Six, I think it was six drops of the lemon, um, the Vitality lemon, and they were awesome. The, the flavor is just really good with that. Then we have frankincense. Well, this happens to be sacred frankincense, um, but regular frankincense is pretty, almost the same thing. Um, there's so much I would like to say about this one right here, and I, but I have to be careful how I word things. Um, this is a really valuable oil, and not just because it costs a lot, which frankincense is one of the more expensive oils. It costs a lot because it's hard to get it. It only grows in certain areas, and those the countries where it grows um, are very protective of it. And so um, it's, it's not very easy to get the plant material. Um, but it's also valuable in the sense that it does a lot. It was valuable enough that the wise men brought it when they made that trek along with the gold for Jesus, baby Jesus. Um, this one is really good for skin. Um, this one is in the blend up called Brain Power. So it's a really good one to help with brain issues. It's good for emotions. It's good, <coughs> excuse me. For female things, it's good for your immune system, for your respiratory system, and it's used by a lot of people that are in the community that you, you ladies and you folks are in. Um, wish I could get say be more specific, but I'm just going to leave it right there at that. Um, but frankincense is one I would highly recommend to all of you. All right, moving on. Next, we're going to get into what we call the blends. These are um, still. The, the, you know, the little bottles of oils, but Young Living has done some research into which oils work well together, and they've blended oils together, and then um, you can buy the blends. This is an easy way to get more variety of oils into your body, because these blends have oils in them that are not in this set that I have right here. So anyway, this one is called RC. RC um, is thought of as respiratory care. Um, I'm not actually sure what the R and the C stand for. But that's what I like to think of it. Respiratory care. You can rub this one on your chest. Remember when you were a kid, mom used to rub stuff on your chest? You can also use the default place of the feet. It also has a very comforting smell. Um, it contains peppermint. It contains lavender. And there's like eight more oils in this one. So the RC is a really good one. Now, I would hold up a little bottle of Thieves, but my Thieves is actually in my schoolroom right now. Um, I have a little mini diffuser. It's about this big, literally, and it's in my, my little piano room where I teach piano. And I use it as my air freshener, double duty to help me stay healthy at school and help my kids stay healthy. I use Thieves in it. Sometimes I use Lemon in it. But right now my Thieves is at school, and it's the only bottle I have right now because I go through that stuff so fast. But Thieves is the one that got me started. Um, I'll do this real quick, but um, I was trying to come up with natural remedies and I was going to like make my own tinctures and herbal remedies and all this stuff and it was t quickly turning into a full-time job that I did not want to have. And I was telling my daughter and she's like, Mom, have you heard about essential oils? I was like, what in the world are you talking about? And so for Christmas that year, she bought me a little set of three. It had RC, it had Thieves, and I think it had Purification in it. 
and Thieves was the one that I used and that I fell in love with because it was the one for the immune system. Like I said, my husband and I both work at school. We get all that winter yuck and all that seasonal yuck going around. And I wanted to try to keep him healthy. He tends to get more things than I do. So that's the one that got me started. It is a great immune system blend. It's, um, it's really just good for overall wellness. Moving on, we have purification. Purification is really good for emotional balance and the digestion and the skin. Um, it's really good too for getting rid of odors and the things that cause odors. I have a little bottle. This is my purification bottle. You can see how much I use it. The label's like had a rough life. I keep this in my purse and when I'm out shopping and I want to eat, I put this on my hands before I eat and I just love having that there. Um, it, if I walk into a room, like a room in the, the house is stale or something, I'll just take this little bottle and spray it and it just kind of eliminates all those odors. It's awesome. Um, let's see what's next. Next we have Digize. This is a, the top blend in Young Living. This is the top selling blend for digestive system. I took this one with me when we went on our first cruise ever, my first cruise ever, because um, I wasn't sure what this was going to do to my stomach on the ship, and so I took the Digize, but it's really good for digestive support. Um, it's good to take with you if you're going to a spicy restaurant or something like that, and you're just not sure. A lot of people put this into little veggie capsules and take this one like a supplement. Then we have Panaway. Um, I have a hard time keeping pan away in my house too because um, I, I make little roller bottles up and send it to mom and dad. Um, they both have issues with joints and things and so I have my little roller ball. Um, I've made up a lot of little roller balls of um, essential oils and that way it's already diluted, it's ready to go, you just rub it on where you need it. But that's my pan away right there. Pan away, I didn't even talk about it, it's really good for muscles and bones. Um, it's good for your cardiovascular system, which is your blood and your circulation, which then helps to get more oxygen to places. Um, and if you've ever had an issue with a joint, you know that you need to keep that blood circulating through that joint. And so that pan away is really good for that. And then the last one I have to talk about is stress away. Um, I used this one just the other day. Um, I had some unexpected stress coming up and I was buzzing around the house trying to take care of stuff and I was just feeling that Ugh. so I have this in a little spray bottle so I just kind of sprayed the air around me and I just stood there and I breathed it in for a couple seconds and it was like okay I can do this and honestly I was able to go on and finish what I needed to do and I didn't feel that internal stress um, this is actually Young Living's top one of their top emotional blends um, and it comes in, like if you just got the basic, basic of the getting started kits with Young Living, this is the only oil that comes in the really stripped down basic getting started one. So anyway, those are 11 oils that I really um, would love to see you get. And they're a really good arsenal to have, those 11. And I love what Young Living has done. They've taken those 11 oils and they've made a package deal just designed just for beginners okay there are actually several different getting started packages that you could start with one has got a lot of these cleaning products in it one is for makeup we have a line of natural makeup it's mineral makeup it does not have oils in it but it is natural makeup um, there are a couple of different getting started kits packages that you can use with Young Living but um, the one that I love is the one that has these 11 oils in it plus a diffuser. Um, it's called a premium starter kit. It is less than half the price. It's more than 50% discounted. Um, if you were to take the individual price of these oils and the individual price of the diffuser, um, it would cost you more than twice as much as this getting started package that they've put together for you. Um, now, See, oh, and the other thing is that when you get these as a package, you also get um, extra samples of oils that you could share. You get um, some samples of the goji berry juice. It's called Ningxia Red because it's from the Ningxia province of China. Um, you get 10 little tiny bottles so that you can share your oils with other people because you're going to be wanting to share them, trust me. Um, you get a roller top that you can put onto a bottle. 
and you get lots of information when you get one of their getting started packages so it really is a good deal um, now there are two ways that you can um, get oils through Young Living and both of them are online so you can pick whichever one works better for you uh, one is to just go to youngliving.com and shop or like if you were going to use my referral number you would go to my website which is oils.thisvitalstuff.com actually I, <laughs> you guys are going to love this I made this up my husband's like how'd you do that I wasn't sure if it was going to flip it or not, so I wrote it in mirror image as well. But oils.thisvitalstuff.com, that's my personal website. Or you can go to youngliving.com if you didn't want to use my referral number or Sharon's or anything. But anyway, two ways to do it. One is retail. You just go, you just shop, you're just a customer, you create a customer account. That's all there is to it. Another one is to get started with one of their getting started kits. They call them starter kits. Um, and that also gets you um, a wholesale discount on all future stuff. So you could just be a retail customer, or if you buy one of their starting kits, you can be a wholesale customer. And that does get you the 24% on the on future 24% off on future orders. It also gets you um, that huge discount right off the bat, more than 50% off. It is the best bargain on the Young Living website. Um, in fact, there are several oils that I need to get, and I need to get another diffuser because I'm tired of moving this one around all over the place. I want one out in the living room, and I want one to stay in the bedroom. Um, so I'm probably going to go back and buy another premium starter kit just to get that discount myself. I've been trying to figure out which month I want to do that in. But um, So when you do that, they, they call you um, a wholesale member. Now, don't let that word member scare you. There are no strings attached. Um, if you all you have to do to remain a member is to actually use your membership once a year if you're not using it then it really doesn't matter to you whether you keep that membership or not but if you're using it once a year um, then you keep that membership so there are no strings attached um, you get that 24 percent there are no monthly fees no monthly minimums no annual fees um, you just have that one purchase per year to keep the discount if you want to keep the discount there's no penalties if you don't want to do that. And the other really neat thing is once you've gotten one of their starter kits and you're a wholesale member, you qualify for the rewards program. And the rewards program gives you free stuff and it gives you product credit that you get to pick um, free items using that product credit. So that's really a, an awesome bargain. Now let me tell you about the mistake that I made, okay? I'm really frugal and I was like when I first got started I did not realize what a bargain this premium starter kit is I saw that there's a basic starter kit it comes with stress away which is a good oil um, but I thought to myself you know I'm just gonna get that basic starter kit and then I'll gradually buy all the oils and the diffuser over time and you know I'm just gonna get started with the basic one and I had got the basic one and it wasn't a month or two later I'm like oh I want this oil I want that oil I want this one why didn't I just get that starter kit it's less it's more than 50% off um, you know and so I ended up buying the basic kit with the stress away and those samples and things and then I turned around and bought the premium starter kit which the basic kit is part of the premium starter kit so I ended up like getting two basic kits um, so I ended up spending more because I bought the basic kit and then I bought the premium starter kit. So honestly, um, if this was just a sales party thing, I would be like pressuring you. You got to order a premium starter kit today. You got to do it today, blah, blah, blah. And I'd give you some incentive to make you want to do it today. Um, but honestly, if your finances are tight and you need to save up to get the premium starter kit, I would recommend that. Um, I would recommend if it takes you a month or two or three to save up for it that that's really the best bargain if you're trying to get the most oils for the least amount of money and get the diffuser that's the cheaper way to do it um, now they do Young Living does use a referral system instead of selling through retail stores why do they do that because they know that that store clerk that just got hired is not going to be able to answer your questions about oils Whereas when you have a referral system, if the person that referred you doesn't know, then they, the person who referred them, good chance they will, or someone else that they are in contact with will. 
And with this referral system, we have Facebook groups. We have a big Facebook group that's all about, you know, what the oils are for, um, all kinds of stuff. There's just so much support that's available for us out there. And so that's why they use a referral system. Um, people that are, I have referred, I send them information. Um, I have books that I can recommend to them. We have the Facebook groups for learning. We have larger Facebook groups. We have get a monthly email from the girl that's my sponsor, sends to everybody. Um, there are podcasts I can recommend. There are YouTube channels, all kinds of stuff. So anyway, um, I really do recommend starting with that premium starter kit. And again, you can just go, you know, I, I'm not trying to, to make my money for myself here. I want you to get started with oils. You can go to youngliving.com. You can sign up and get a random sponsor. Okay, that's totally fine. You'll even have to tell us you did it if, if that, you know, if you're a little bit concerned about that. Um, if you would like to use Sharon's number or my number, you can go to my website. Let me pull out my fancy sign. I was going to print a sign and my printer was just not working tonight. So you can go to oils.thisvitalstuff.com and at the top there's a tab for getting started. You can just do that and then if you want to bless Sharon through that, you can let her know that you did that and I can switch that around once you've placed your order. I can go into the back office and I can put her number in there as well so that she gets a blessing through that. Okay? Um, I think that's it. So again, when you're ready to get started, you can use the random referral number. Just say you don't have one. You can use my friend's referral number. Her name is Chris. Her number is 1942897 and I'll put that in a comment. comment. Um, if you want to go through Sharon, which does also bless me, you can go to my website and sign up and just let Sharon know that you did that and you can shop for your, your kit there. Or if you feel like there's a conflict of interest with Sharon, you want to just do through me, you can do that also. Again, just go to oils.thisvitalstuff.com. It'll fill in the numbers for you. That's why I have this. Um, and you can um, do the getting started there and you can pick your premium starter kit. It doesn't have to be this oils one, although this is what I think is the best way to get started. If you're really worried about products, you can get a premium starter kit that's all about the products that you can replace for your home. Um, there's also options of getting different diffusers that have more bells and whistles. If you want to pay some extra for that, you can get a premium starter kit with more bells and whistles in your diffuser. This particular diffuser is not part of the starter kit right now. It's called the bamboo diffuser. Um, it does change from time to time. This is the one that came in my starter kit. But um, there's, there's a couple different ones now that you can get just for the flat price. And then you can add extra if you want some of the bells and whistles. So with that being said, that is the end of our class time together. I do want to thank you guys so much for letting me um, share the world of essential oils with you. I know that was kind of quick. That was a lot of information. And hopefully, um, hopefully you got something out of that. So with that being said, our class is over. Those of you that um, want to go during the break can do that. If anybody wants to stick around and ask questions, then I will be happy to answer any questions that you have. All right, well, we'll be talking to you later. Bye-bye.